In this video, I'm gonna to try to provide you with as much information as possible on the Pecron E1500 LFP portable power station. And this is a good opportunity to talk about what comes with your power station. You'll get the power cord, you'll get a um, cigarette lighter to what I think is a 5521 connection, and then you'll get your GX16MF to an Anderson connection, and another GX16MF to MC4, and then you'll get your battery terminal uh, connectors, your alligator clamps, or whatever you wanna call them, to your XT60 uh, for your connection up here. And of course, a nice little carrying case and this information packet. <laughs> and the Pecron E1500 LFP is an expandable portable power station. And what that means is that we can add additional batteries to this to expand the capacity. So this is 1,536 watt hours and it can be expanded to 7,680 watt hours by adding two additional batteries. And those are the EP3000. And I always like getting the actual weight of these power stations. This one is 40.6 pounds. And the rough dimensions are nine by 14 by 11 and a half. And Pecoron does have an app that you can control this power station through, but the only way to connect that is through Wi-Fi. I do wish it was connection through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but currently you can only connect through Wi-Fi. And to connect the power station into the app, you'll wanna press and hold the DC and AC until you see your Wi-Fi indicator up here flashing. And then in here, you'll hit add device. And then I'm gonna search nearby devices. It's gonna be this one right here. You'll hit the little plus button. This will come up. You'll wanna enter your password to your Wi-Fi. And once you have that, hit next. And you'll see that it's starting to add it right here. And we're still flashing back here. Well, actually that's connected now. Now we're just waiting for the, there it is. Now it's solid and this is checked and it's added. So now we'll click into it, go down here and hit done and we can change the name of it, but let's just save it and move on. Right here it is, it's online. If we click into the app, you'll see this screen displayed here. So you'll see 97% there, 97% there, everything matches. You have a lot of different things that you can play around with, different settings uh, down here. But I just wanted to show you how to connect the power station to the app because we don't see that a lot in these review videos and I hope that that's helpful for you. And here's something that we don't see on a lot of the newer power stations, especially of this size, is a wireless charging uh, at the top of it. And this can charge your cell phone, your earbuds, or anything that accepts this type of charging. Now let's talk about how to turn on and off the DC. So this is the DC button, you press and hold, it turns it off. This is your AC button, press and hold, turns it off. So the entire system's off right now. Now we'll press and hold to turn the AC on and we'll press and hold to turn the DC on. Now let's talk about the AC outputs and the DC outputs. We'll start with the AC outputs. We have three 20 amp plugs and a total of 2200 watts that could be produced continuously out of those. Your DC outputs, you have an XT60, a barrel port, and a cigarette lighter here. And you can see the ratings on each one of those. We have 12 by 10 amps, 12 by 5 amps, 12 by 30 amps, and your USB outputs are one USB-C at 100, one USB-C at 18, and four USB-A at 18 watts. And here's the battery expansion port. So this is how you would add in those batteries I was talking about earlier. You would connect them here and you can connect up two batteries to expand this out to much larger capacity. For the display, we can look at the percentage of the battery and if we can hit this DC again, we can actually see the voltage of the battery. And on the AC side, if we hit this again, we can see the Hertz, the volts, and you can kind of change what you're seeing on the display itself by selecting these buttons multiple times. 
And I do like that it's protected on every corner of the power station because this will absorb the impact if it has fallen off of a tailgate or something and hits that corner. Rather than damaging the unit, that'll absorb it and keep it from busting this thing up. And also what these are good for is for stabilizing the unit. See how I'm hitting that pretty hard and it's not really moving on that. So it keeps it from sliding around. The overall design, the way that you would grab this is pretty awesome. I mean, this has like little grips at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see this, but I really do like that because it's not just something that's slick. It's when you grab a hold of it, you got a good grip on it. And here's the two fans that pull the hot air out. And here's your two ports that suck the air in to cool down the inverter when you're charging it or you got a large load on it. And I was very impressed with the DC efficiency output on the capacity of that with 1407 watt hours because I have never tested a power station that got into that 90% efficiency on the DC capacity when I did a discharge. This time we got uh, 1407, which gives us a total of 91.6% efficiency. That's the highest rating that I've ever got out of a power station. Now that we have this charge back up to 100%, we're gonna do an AC discharge and see what the efficiency that we get out of it. The industry standard is between 85 and 90, but the industry standard on the DC output capacity was 80 to 85, and we hit 91.6% efficiency. So I'm very curious to see what we get out of this AC capacity test on efficiency. And now that I have the heater turned on, we got a discharge of around 800 watts. So what I've done, I've turned the heater on a lower setting so it's not discharging at such a high rate because if I leave it on high, we're doing around 1200 to 1300 watts. I just think it's more fair to bring it down around the 800 watts for a continuous discharge. And we'll get our rating of the kilowatt hour capacity right here on the screen. And we'll see what happens after we get a full discharge. And to my surprise, the AC output capacity underperformed at 1,243 watt hours of the total 1,536 watt hours, giving us an efficiency of around 81%. And now that we've completed all of our capacity tests, let's talk about solar charging. I'm gonna be charging this with an array that I have outside, and I'll take you out there in just a second to look at exactly what I'm using to charge this up. But it's important to note, this does not have an Anderson plug. This has a GX16 MF plug, which is a lot different than uh, most of the power stations that I use when it comes to charging with solar because they provide you with an Anderson plug and then you plug it in on the side to charge. Anyway, this one's a little different and all you do is plug it in right here. And now that we have it plugged in, we're just waiting for the inverter to kick on and start charging. So there we go, we got 17 watts. This should slowly climb up to around 350 to 400 watts. So, and while this is doing this thing, let's head on outside and take a look at how I have this set up. I'm only gonna hook one of these panels up because this is a 400 watt panel that is bifacial, meaning it could gain up to 100 extra watts, go up to 500 watts. Probably not in this scenario, but we couldn't hook two of those up because then we would be over the 700 watts. And I did want to test the AC input and the DC input charging at the same time and see if this would charge faster than 1400 watts because I can't find anything on that. So I have 1400 watts coming in here and around 350 to 400 watts coming in on the DC side. We got to wait till this gets up to around five to 7% for this to actually start to full charge because it starts off slow and then ramps up as you get past that five, it's 5% 5 or 7% that I've been seeing on it. And then it slows back down again when you get closer to 100%. But I did want to test this to see if we can go over 1400 watts of total charge power uh, coming in from AC and DC, or if it regulates 1400 watts, depending on what you got plugged in uh, for your inputs. And now that we've reached 5%, you can see that it's starting to ramp up. I've unplugged the AC input and we have around 323 watts of solar coming in for a charge. If we plug this back in, we'll bump up close to 1400 watts, maybe 1400, 1406 watts but we never really go anything over that. So adding your solar and your AC at the same time doesn't boost this up like 
uh, 1400 watts here and 300 watts here, giving you a total of 1700 watts. It basically regulates between the two and it gives you 1400 watts. And now you'll see that we're closer to the 1400 as everything starts to settle out. We're over the 10%. Uh, you'll range anywhere from 1350 to the 1400. And I did notice on the website that it stated that it could do a max of 700 watts of input for solar. But then I found that it could do 800 watts. And what I noticed here is it could do 700 watts from this side and 100 watts from this side. This is a GX16MF connector. And this is a DC5521 connector. So this can put in a smaller solar panel while this can handle a, a larger array. I was going to use that 100 watt solar panel there to test this out, but unfortunately I don't have any connection that will allow me to do that because Pecron does not include that with their uh, pack that you receive. And now I want to conduct a UPS test and I always use these lights because they're super sensitive. I've never tested a power station that did not flicker these lights. The Pecron E1500 LFP is supposed to have a 10 millisecond transfer. So basically what this means is if we have this plugged into the wall and it's powering these lights and the power goes out on this uh, AC in, then it would automatically switch over and we should not see any type of uh, disruption in our service. Now let's unplug it and see what happens. That's very fast. Let's plug it back in and see if we get a flicker when it switches back over. All right, it's very, very quick. Um, I mean, I'm happy with that because that's probably the fastest transfer that I've seen with these lights. And in other tests that I've conducted, I've added additional load, a larger load on the output. So when I disconnect it from the AC input from the wall and it switches over, sometimes it causes a longer flicker. So that's why I have the heater out and I wanna test how this operates under a large load, uh, especially for this unit, because we're gonna be running around 1600 watts with this and the light when I go to unplug this. So let's see what happens. We turn this on, we're at 1458, 1756. I'm gonna unplug and we almost see no flicker, even with an additional load on the system. Oh, let me make sure to test this, plugging it back in as well. So we're at 1600, I turn it back on. You'll hear this switch. Very, very fast flicker, both ways. Uh, probably the best that I've seen uh, on these power stations as far as how fast it actually does switch over. So I'm very happy with that. You may not even be able to see those flickers on camera when I'm talking about them, they're so quick. Sometimes I could see it with my eye, but I can't catch it on camera. And while I had the heater out, let's test the overload protection uh, on the inverter. So when we overload these units, they should automatically kick off, keeping it from damaging your power station and even causing a fire. So we wanna make sure that these overload protections are in place. So the heater, when it first turns on, it's gonna be running anywhere from 16 to 1700 watts, but it, it settles out and comes back down to around, I think 1200 watts, 1300 watts. So it's running in at around 1140 watts. Now we'll connect the heat gun and see if we overload this and the power station shuts down. And I should point out that this unit is capable of producing or continuously producing 2200 watts of output power surge up to 4400 watts so i gotta get this up to over 2400 watts for an x amount of time to see if this will shut down so let's get this turned on we're going way way up here in just a second so we're at 1900 watts 2033 watts 2145 probably one more click will be over 2200 that's definitely going to put us over 2200 that's 2447 2549 okay it shut down that's what i was looking for it ran over that 2200 
for a little bit of time, actually around that 2,500. That was really nice to see that we had that surge power for a couple seconds. So if we're starting up motors or something, uh, I think this would be completely fine for doing that. So now, will this kick back on automatically after you disconnect? So right now we have overload protection here in the corner. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to turn this off and then turn it back on and do a manual reset. And now I wanna test this little air compressor that I have that is a 12 volt uh, air compressor that plugs into the cigarette lighter. And this is a uh, 12 volt 10 amp outlet, but this air compressor is 12 volts, 15 amps. And there's times that these power stations don't run this because it just pulls so much DC power. And I wouldn't expect it to actually run the air compressor because it's telling us right here on the box that it is 12 volt, 10 amp. And right here on the air compressor is telling us 12 volts, 15 amps. So let's see what happens. And let's turn it on. It actually runs the air compressor and we're running right at 92 watts. And what I'm assuming is happening is when we turn on the air compressor, it has that surge, but we have that surge capabilities out of the power station itself that allows us to power on the air compressor. And once it continues to run, it doesn't use as much power. So that's a really good thing. So if this power station tickles your fancy, be sure to check out the links below because they are throwing some killer deals on this power station. Uh, I will say in my final thoughts that there was two things that concerns me about the power station. It wouldn't stop me from buying it at the prices that they have it put at right now. But I did I find a little bit of concerning that the AC output capacity came in right around 81% efficiency. And I did not have any way of connecting uh, smaller solar panels because I wasn't provided that connection uh, where I can connect my smaller solar panels. I have a couple 100 watt solar panels and I was gonna try one of those in this, but I didn't have a connection. They also have MC4 connectors on them and I didn't have no way of connecting that. So those are my two uh, concerns with this unit, but at the price that they have this thing on sale at right now, it's worth going out and snatching them up. And I appreciate everybody that made it to the end of the video. Because you made it this far, I wanna ask you a very small favor. If you can smash that thumbs up button it really does help me out a lot. I really do appreciate it and I hope to catch you in my next video.